things. So really grateful that and um, you are co-host. You can start sharing at any point. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to hit the record button now. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'm sure that it falls into one of those categories. And I can't thank you enough for joining us for the COSIN 2020 virtual conference, and especially this session. And before we step into the session, I, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and I wanted to let you know I'm Carolyn Rinker. I am the Director of Corporate Relations at COSIN. I'll be your technical host for today's session. Before we hear from Mitch, our speaker, I want to remind you about a few technical processes to make sure you get the most out of this session. If you have questions or comments for our speakers during the session, please be sure to type them in the chat box on the right hand side of the screen. And if you can't see the chat box yet, click the chat icon at the bottom of the Zoom portal to open it. And if you're a Twitterer, please feel free to tweet your favorite thing, your biggest learning throughout the session, or even your most favorite speaker. And make sure you use the hashtag COSIN2020 and tag at COSIN. Would love to see some uh, tweets coming out of this session from this group. So again, the session is being recorded. It'll be available for rewatching. If you should miss anything or you want to watch it again at a later date. We also want to hear your feedback about the session. So at the end of the day, you'll receive an email survey with links to the evaluations of today's session. The evaluation is very short and your feedback does help us adjust and enhance our programming for next year. And I guarantee we'll be looking at all of those. So with that, I would like to turn this over to Mitch. Okay, well, good evening or good afternoon. And I'm Mitch Weisberg. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to do a shout out because I see Keith is in the audience. And of course, Carolyn introduced me. And this is the last session of the day. And in, in the chat, I It'd be great if everybody just thanked them. This has been really a, a, a full day, uh, lots of really interesting speakers, and they've been working their tails off. So um, they deserve a, a, a big round of applause. So thank you, Keith, and thank you, Carolyn, and every and everything that uh, everybody from COSIN, because you've been great. Uh, this session is Welcome to Augmented Reality and Virtual Reality Across Remote and Visual Instruction. And I think that this topic is especially relevant during coronavirus, as uh, teachers are really being called on to teach remotely, and none of us are sure what next year is gonna look like. So what we do know is that we need to give teachers flexible means of instruction uh, so that they can motivate and engage students, whether they're teaching in class or remotely. And it turns out that augmented reality and virtual rea reality activities dovetail nicely with that need. Now, unfortunately, we only have a half hour um, and then you all can go out and, and have your wine and your, and your happy hours. Uh, but that makes, we're obviously gonna be very limited to what we can cover. Uh, there's a form attached to the QR code on your screen um, or you could go to the URL. So if you have questions that we were, I wasn't able to, to, to address, or you want more information, or you want to set up a meeting, just go to that form and, um, and fill it out. But in any case, let's start out with who is 3D Bear? Now, 3D Bear is a Finnish education company that grew out of work that the founders were doing with the Finnish Ministry of Education. And I think that the best introduction would be to hear from Yussi Kiala, who's one of the founders. Now, it's 2.30 in the morning there, but let's see if we can wake him up virtually. Hi, I'm Yussi Kiala. Oops, sorry. Sorry, Yussi. Uh, let's do that again. Hi, I'm Yussi Kiala one of the founders of 3D Bear, and today I'm going to explain just in five minutes what 3D Bear is. We provide immersive technologies for learning. We've been already recognized by several large players in the field, including Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation selected us to be top eight company for XR in education. We are partner for Google for Education and a Microsoft in Education Global Training Partner. What we do is that we bring these XR technologies, augmented reality, virtual reality, 360 photos, 3D scanning, 3D modeling, 3D printing, to schools in actual educational use. We provide platform, which is so easy to use, that teachers can create their own content, own learning experience, 
and also students can create their own 3D worlds both in AR and VR. So in comparison to buying an expensive simulator that you need to code in Unity or Unreal, you can use our low barrier of entry mobile platforms to create whatever you want for education. That's us. So um, let's take an example. Here's largest city school in Finland, Keuda, and their students do here interior design. All first year students in Keuda go through this course where they learn to use AR in interior design. And that's an important skill for today already. Being able to visualize at your customer how the kitchen is going to look like before you build it so that you can iterate the digital design is very important asset for you. Um, and we've created, or actually the teacher has created, a group of models, 40 models, that is used in this specific exercise, which also the teacher has created. And the simple task is, how do you design the space? And the students go there, do it, and then it's part of their e-portfolio of work using AR to actually design a space. And what is more, in this specific example, there's an online course, 10 study credits, where students really learn the skill of using AR in interior design, including sourcing 3D models, building your own 3D scanning, and this is all built together with a teacher. Um, another example, we have a uh, gamified VR experience to learn process industry. So here you're in a controlling room where you can read the automation system of a factory, noticing what's wrong, and then go to the field and practice repair operations. You have first wear protective glasses, and then I can go to the field, speak with the controlling room in kind of a multiplayer mode, and discuss how what repair operations do I need to do to get the factory going. So, for example, I need to open this valve, turn this pump on, and if I do a mistake, like here's a black backflow valve, I accidentally open it wholly, it takes me to a learning space where I can learn what I did wrong, find pictures about the system, and go back to the field and perform the operations right. And there's a lot of different examples, virtual art exhibitions, architecture, healthcare, anatomy, uh, you name it. We operate in many CTE fields and also many primary education fields. Here's some examples of content that we've developed. And what we do again is that we package these learning experiences based on your need so that your teachers learn how to use AR and VR in their teaching and they can build their own content. So we train teachers, we hold uh, student workshops, we provide you the software some of it which is our own, some of it is from our partners, we always select the right software for you. And we build the whole channel starting from how you start using AR and VR to using it in a proper online course where you learn the skill to a professional level in your specific CTE field. So you see, thank you very much and now you can go back to sleep. And, um, and as you can see here, the company has grown it's, it, worldwide, it, uh, 9,000 classrooms, we're in uh, 47 uh, countries. And as Yussi mentioned, 3D Bear is, is about how technology, especially, especially AR and VR technology, can help teachers motivate and engage students for deep learning. So let's explore the pedagogical model for using AR and VR with students. So over the course of the day, I'm sure you've heard this a lot, that this is, we, we need to take advantage of this opportunity so that we can correct what we know is wrong about education at the same time as we are forced to make changes in our system. Now, since we don't know what next year is really going to look like, there's, still, there's a lot of uncertainty. But what we do know is that there's a need for a ready, mobile and flexible workface and workforce and citizenship, and that need has never been greater. And we know that we're the ones who are tasked with preparing children for their roles. The best uses of AR and VR are to support engaging the students, helping them learn, and then providing a path to mastery. 3D Bear uses a three-step learning process with all of our lessons, engage, learn, and then master. 
we start with showing students that they can succeed, developing their confidence and grit, and making the first step or task really easy. That's what motivates students to continue. Next, students learn through solving problems and creating projects that they care about through online hands-on activities using AR and VR. Finally, pave the way for mastery through more advanced design and problem solving activities that tap into the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy and which also provide the known effective practices of reflection, assessment, and there goes my phone, of course, assessment and feedback, repetition, and self-direction. And in order to teach this way, we need to provide teachers with the knowledge and skills to effectively teach in this manner. So how do we do that? We're gonna go through six steps to prepare teachers to teach in a, flexi in a flexible manner using AR and VR. And on each step, we'll also have an example of a student project. So you can see the types of things that students produce. First, teachers have to learn to do the things that the students are going to do. They need to learn how to create scenes, photos, and videos using AR and to set up assignments for lessons. And then here on the right, you see an example of a student ELA project, one where the students created a story. Next, teachers have to learn what types of lessons are already available, how to use them, how to assign them, adopt them, introduce them to engage students, and provide feedback and assessment. And here, we have an example of an SEL, augmented reality scene. In this case, students are learning how to label and recognize emotions. The best uses of AR and VR are when they are grounded in design thinking. And they're most effective when teachers use the same agile project management techniques that are used in the workplace all the time. These aren't generally skills that teachers have been taught before. So in this step, teachers learn what these processes are and then get experience using them with their, with their own project. And then here in this AR example, students have recreated a, a, a historical scene. And we find that's a very popular activity used in history and social studies in elementary and middle schools. Step four is guiding teachers on how to use design thinking and agile techniques with their students and with their lessons and activities. And step four also includes how to expand the types of projects they use beyond lesson plans that others have developed, but to also adapt them to their own teaching style and their own learning goals. And here on the right, we have a video that was created by a first grade student. And this student, English was not her primary language, was not her native language, and she's making a video about the letter D. Hello everyone, my name is Good Marison. Today we are gonna have fun with letter D. So here I begin. Let's see my farmhouse. Are you excited? See these daisy flowers. They're so pretty and bright in color. See the grass. It's so fresh and green. See the ducks over here. See the farmhouse. Oh, I just forgot to tell you about my farmhouse. This is a farmhouse where I live. And these are three ducks. I keep them safe in my farmhouse from danger. And there's a guard of this farmhouse, the letter D. So let's come over here. Let's see what I have today. What is here? A deer? So it's pretty cool, right? Now that's a, that's a first grader who did that. Okay, now step five. Step five is all about instilling mastery. In PD with the teachers and also for the teachers instilling mastery with their students. Here, the teachers learn how to create interactive labs using 360 photos with 3D scanning and using outside repositories of researches, resources. 
and how to then teach those same skills to their students. And on the right is one of a large number of virtual labs that teachers are using to teach science. In this case, a student was asked to create a biome and then explain why it was sustainable. Now, I'd said six steps to preparing teachers, and the first five were all professional development. The sixth is coaching and ongoing support. Teachers also need to get feedback, to share ideas, talk about challenges, explore practical ways to overcome some of the obstacles they encounter. And we've all seen what happens with one and done PD. That's why to really create change, 3D Bear provides ongoing coaching, mentoring, and support. And then on the right, it's a CTE example. Here a student is combining augmented reality design with a miniature model. We are, we are finding that with students restricted from hands-on activities that they can do in class or at the shop because they're home and they're not in school, augmented reality and virtual reality can really hit the mark and give them real world skills they need in the job market. So I think what we're seeing as one major hurdle in remote learning today is that students are not engaged and not motivated. These steps help teachers make projects easy to start, let students see what's in it for them, reinforce the progress through success and feedback, and help students develop grit. And in this example, students are learning architecture and interior design skills through an AR station. We call these mobile AR labs, and they provide a very flexible, effective, and affordable hands-on learning activity. So you may have already seen many of the benefits through learning, of, through, learning through AR and VR from the examples we've shown so far, but let me quickly cycle through some of these advantages. Okay, first, students get to practice on real world situations. Students are really motivated when augmenting their natural environments without any risk. Through AR and VR, we can have students apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. Oops, sorry, I'm one slide ahead. <laughs> uh, we, the creation process uses, uses visual, kinesthetic, and even audio channels for learning. And students, uh, students apply, analyze, evaluate, and create, which are the higher levels of um, Bloom's taxonomy. We all know that creation is the highest level of learning. And the result is that we see higher academic achievement, development of work and life skills, decreased costs, and individually tailored solutions. So now I'd like to share some of my favorite student activities and many of these, as you'll see, are in uh, CTE. So here, you saw the interior design example earlier. In this hospitality example, students designed different table settings. And in the automotive example, students had to assemble different parts of a car in augmented reality. A lot of healthcare or nursing courses are using AR and VR activities from product design to teaching anatomy to experiencing life as a patient. Uh, a student can experience what it would be like to have dementia or Alzheimer or colorblindness in virtual reality uh, through uh, solving problems and creating best practices and safety procedures. And then related to hospitality is culinary and catering. And notice here that some of the activities can, use be, uh, can be used across different occupations, like the, set, the setting a table you see in culinary and catering, but it was also used in hospitality. And then cosmetality, cosmetology and travel are great fields for AR and VR use. Notice that you can, and notice here again, you can teach the same concept, the safety designs and procedures, which you saw earlier in healthcare. Here, that same problem can be modified based on a different occupational field.
creating scenes and stories in augmented reality and, vid vis and virtual reality to create photos and videos is often used to support language learning in any language. Let me see two examples here. And then there are a ton of service project activities. In this one, middle school students offer suggestions for redesigning the school library. In fact, in this case, the school actually followed many of the design uh, suggestions. Our assignment was to research morning. why comfortable seating was more efficient than regular seating. 3D Bear helped me complete this assignment because it actually showed realistic models of what it would look like if it were in that room. We had our imagination put into a screen and we saw it eye to eye, like in a visual. I was really happy when I saw the furniture additions they brought over the summer in our classrooms because it made me think that like the faculty and the teachers were really listening to our ideas and taking into consideration our thoughts. I think it's really going to help kids learn better and stay more focused in school. So another area it, uh, where AR and VR are used is in virtual uh, field trip activities and virtual field trips. Uh, and a matter of fact, the Cradle Museum of Aviation, which is in Long Island, is going to be giving a webinar in July on virtual activities that they offer for schools to teach STEM through augmented reality and, visual, and virtual reality. And then uh, AR and VR can be used for gamifying problem solving. This is a virtual escape room. Uh, and it's the one that you saw that Yussi demonstrated on his vi video. And here, if you can't fix the problem, the factory blows up. Now, we don't recommend you try that in a real factory because you could probably only try it once. But in a virtual one, people can keep on trying it and just restart the process if they, if they get it wrong. So I'm hoping that many of you are wondering, wow, this sounds really good. How would we get started? Well, 3D Bear is offering two free planning or coaching meetings on remote and virtual instruction and augmented reality and visual reality, virtual reality. So if you're interested, again, you can scan this QR code or go to the URL um, and fill out and say what you're interested in, or you can email any of the four of us and we'll, we'll set up a meeting. So basically, that's, that, that's an overview of many of the different things that you can do with augmented and, and virtual reality, how it applies to uh, remote learning and in-class learning, different examples, the pedagogical model that we use behind it, and who is 3D Bear. So um, open up if there's any questions. So Mitch, one of the great things that um, I saw was the, um, the example of the first grader because mm -hmm. in sitting in the BYOI CTO chats, you know, one of the things I heard is that, that um, you know, remote learning has been hardest for K through 12. And so it was really fun to see how, you know, you don't need to have any really big, um, big honking machines or oh. heavy equipment and that, you know, any age can actually use this for learning. Yeah. And it's interesting because the, the, basic software behind augmented reality or virtual reality for that matter. It's used from pre-K all the way up to occupational colleges, what we would call community colleges, but um, occupational co uh, universities in, in Finland are, use, are using the same software that pre-K pre kids are using because it's, it's kind of like a pencil. Um, you, it's really what you do with it rather than the software itself. But that, thank you. Thank you for the comment. Any other comments or questions for Mitch? Well, yeah, I, I guess every, everybody's getting ready to have a glass <laughs> of wine. And my wife is, is just sitting in the other rooms. I, I heard her open the wine. And so I think I am too. So I think that AR and VR is just an exciting um, opportunity. I think it's, it's an exciting way for our students to learn.